name is Nicole Bogley, and I want to spend the next few minutes talking about um, feedback practices and ways to use them to empower students to learn more and to create a culture of learning. When my daughter was in second grade, every Wednesday they would get an object, a paper clip or something like that and create something with it and then describe it um, in writing. On Friday, she'd, they'd share them. On Monday, she'd get it back and it would say super job or um, great work, really creative. We've been doing these for a few months and I noticed that her writing was going across the page like this and she had capital letters in the middle of her sentences and her words, excuse me. And so I, I decided to ask her about it, former English teacher and her mother, and I said, Maya, juicy details. I'm having a little hard time reading your writing. What do you think you could do about it? And she looked at me and she's like, Mom, it doesn't matter. She puts super job on it anyway. And I had that moment of pause of, oh my. And and I, I reflected back and I'm like, you know, it's really powerful what we intend as something that's really positive. When um, students make up their own meaning of the, the, th the, the symbols and the words that we write on their paper. And so in the absence of, of our students knowing what excellent means, they kind of make it up. Um, and what we know, if you think about students who actually do well over time, um, and I think about what happens when they make a mistake, so often they're incredibly stressed or freaking out because they feel like that mistake is something about their own self-worth. And so I knew when I put excellent on papers in my, of my students, I knew why it was excellent. But sometimes I don't think my students really did. And so in the absence of that, they start to think it's about them and their own worth versus um, this is really quality work. And so then when they do make a mistake, they don't perceive it as a next step or an opportunity to grow, but really as more of an evaluation on them. Um, and also on the flip side, when kids don't do well over time and they get um, comments that say, um, things like try again or um, write more or whatever that is that is more evaluative and not descriptive in nature, then they also seem, see it as part of them and also define themselves as not a writer, not a reader, um, or whatever the, the content is. And, and so their self-worth drops, their confidence level drops. And when, our con when we're not feeling very confident about something, it's really difficult to engage at a deep level or to try to take that next step. I think about times when I don't feel confident in what I'm doing. I sometimes procrastinate and I sometimes step back and just want to avoid it. Um, and other times I dig right in um, if I have a, have, a, have a next step. And so when we think about effective feedback, um, feedback can influence our perceptions about how um, our confidence in our work and so pow in powerful ways when we offer kids strengths and next steps in our feedback and I, I really um, I really believe that those are two things that are really important with effective feedback is offering kids a strength in terms of their learning as well as a next step that that empowers them to say hey you know what I am going to take this next step I am going to give it a give it a shot. I also feel like feedback has to be inspired and required. So the inspired part is students absolutely need to know um, what it is they need to work on to get better. So that means it has to be a descriptive comment versus an evaluative comment. Um, then it, the required part is that so often if I give kids feedback and offer them the opportunity to revise or, or do again or redo, they often don't take me up on that, or at least the students who really need to don't. And so. When I'm offering feedback for the purpose of learning and getting better, then I'm going to offer one or two comments because that's the other thing we know is that often kids get so many comments that they're overwhelmed and they don't know they don't know where to start. Um, and in the research, that also is very clear. So, and it's very hard. I remember going through my the work and I wanted to comment on everything. Um, but one thing that reduces not only our students' um, stress and helps them learn more, but also reduces our workload is by focusing on what do I really want students to focus on or work on in this particular piece and giving them one or two comments and then requiring them, inspiring them through our comments and then requiring them to take that next step forward. And the other piece with, um, with feedback is this idea that um, Dylan William talks about is feedback should cause thinking. And I want to extend that to not only should it cause thinking, but it should generate action that leads to student investment. And so that anytime I'm offering feedback for the purpose of learning and growing versus evaluation, like I may have to put some comments on a student's paper to justify a grade or a percentage that I, or a rubric score that I offered them. And that's different than when I'm offering them comments to help them grow. Um, 
I, I used to get so sometimes frustrated because I would see kids making the same mistake over and over and over again. And um, I realized that in, in some ways I would be offering kids comments on a paper and then expect them to transfer those, that insight to the next time that they worked that type of writing or that type of task. Well, that tran in the transfer, often things are lost and kids don't make that. They really need to revise their work right in that moment um, on the feedback that I'm giving, on the piece of work that I'm giving the feedback um, on. And Hattie and Tim really found this as well, that kids, um, when we expect them to transfer to the next time and they haven't gone deeper and made those revisions there, they often don't make those transfers. And so that's where that keeping making the same mistakes over and over again um, come from. So that generating action and doing it in the work is one piece. And then that should also lead to more student investment, um, what I call investment, in that kids are starting to recognize quality work. And so I'm sure many of you put up strong and weak um, examples of work and have students try to recognize what's strong about it, what's not strong about it, and move forward with that. And that's, um, that's one key, key way that um, kids start to be able to recognize it in their own work. So up front, I'm doing much more commenting. The strength and the, and the next step and having kids respond to that and I use that in my instruction and then later on I'm asking them to, to, to say um, or I'm posing to them what are the aspects of quality writing or quality this quality piece um, what's strong about it what's what's the next step now look at your own work what's strong about your own work what would be your next step and then I'm looking at that and so I'm slowly um, shifting those feedback practices so that students are doing more of that self-assessment and that can be a real powerful um, way of also not only reducing our workload, but really shifting to a culture of learning and, and, and helping kids go back to their work and do that difficult work of trying to recognize, hey, this is how this would be um, um, even better. One of the things I do also ask kids is for their own feedback. Hattie, and Hattie did this review of um, a, a bunch of different practices in education. And one of the things he found is feedback from students to teachers is powerful. So another way to look at feedback is um, asking kids, how did this go? You know, what worked about this? What didn't work about this? And then really looking at their comments um, as a reflection of, hey, this might be something that I could, could, um, could help improve this particular lesson or this particular practice to help and support students. Um, and not that we're always going to take up what students have to say or reflect on the on what happened in the classroom, but the simple act of just asking their thoughts about that creates this community, um, a culture of learning where their voice is is important. Um, it's not that it's always going to be, oh, you said the student said this, so we're going to do this. But just that simple act of asking draws students into a culture of learning. So I sometimes will ask kids um, different statements, and the one that relates most to feedback is the comments on my papers help me learn. And then I'll ask kids to strongly agree to strongly disagree on a on a Likert scale and ask them to explain, you know, kind of why, where they felt they fell on that. And those can be really powerful uh, ways of, of learning about our practice as well as helping students learn and grow. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with me. Um, if I can do anything to support your work, I will throw my email up on, on the screen for a few seconds. So have a good day. Thank you.